Hello, Professor Bright here. Welcome back to Disco Elysium, where our investigation has taken a turn. Turns out the murder victim was victimizing other people. Apparently sexual assault too, which is a little bit squicky in my opinion, but uh, for now I'm trusting that the developers, or rather the writers, will actually, you know, handle it reasonably. A tome of fascist mass magic? What? Everything, everyone knows the most interesting thing about fascists was their magic. What? See, there's moments like that, and then all of a sudden we're in Law & Order SVU, which is not my preferred crime show. Let's see, the plaque on the shelf reads biographies of famous people. You see a large variety of names, none of which ring a bell. Anything of note? I would say, the woman hums to herself, the greatest innocence. Yes, most certainly. It's an important educational tool, delving to the depths of... History, religion, and their relation to innocentic power. Who or what's an innocence? A very influential historical figure, but surely I don't have to tell you that. She waves her hand as if casting aside the thought. You're a law officer, and law officers have at least some education. The book is also very daring. The author aims to re-examine the universal understandings of the innocentic system, creating a fresh vantage point and a shift in the tired order of things. What are these innocences, again? I'm hearing references to them, but... Is, is it purely political, or is it... I don't know. Anyway, I thought it was about which of these innocences is the coolest and greatest. Perhaps for laymen, she scoffs. Deep analysis is necessary to peel back the multi-layered meanings. Do her words seem vague and abstract to you? A little bit, yes. So you recommend it? Certainly, it's prudent for a person to have at least an elementary understanding of history and society. I would love that. Imagine the chaos we'd be in otherwise. Ha 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 Imagine. You feel like you should get this one. Definitely, it's important somehow. There's something personal inside. Something personal inside? Okay. I'll buy it. A true cultural touchstone, she nods. Enjoy the read. Hmm. Just vapid egoism. Suddenly, a particularly odd title catches your eye. It reads, High Speed Love, the tragic true love story of Jacob... I don't know how to pronounce that at all. Er. And Alfie Delatraz by one Cecilia Averbrook. What's it about? High Speed Love chronicles the romance between two of the finest tip-top tourney racers in history. One of them is the madcap driver, Jacob Er. His blonde mane graces the cover. Next to Er is the life story. You see a slim biography of an occidental rock star called The Antistar. He's famous for shooting morphine into one of his eyeballs and cocaine into the other. Next to that, Rev. Sholian radio personality Guillaume Bevy stands in front of a run-down drug den. He's a permanent fixture on Channel 8, reporting on real-life crime and ruining cops' days. I really must insist you buy one of the books. You're interrupted by the shopkeep. Reading them is not for free. Do still browse, though, but not too long. I'm sorry, I did not mean to rush you. You are browsing. Go ahead. Take your time. Time is commerce. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I'm just exploring here to... Save some time, or burn some time, really. Just because... Mm, I'm still a little bit shaken up by some of the things that happened in the last two episodes, actually. Both that interview and the weird scene of us hanging is kind of... It's got a little bit of a horror bent to it now that I'm not... I wasn't really prepared for, I suppose. Ah, oh, dear. Several maps have been attached to a bulletin board hidden inside the alcove. They're held up by small pins. The board has come loose from one corner. The maps look old and faded. Your eye catches a map of Inslindy, a map of Revachol, and a map of Martinez. Ooh. Large map displays archipelagos. You see a constellation of small dots on the light blue emptiness of the Insulindic Ocean. The large in the, no the largest in the northeast is Le Calou. You're here. Another far away in the southwest, Seminese Islands, Ile des Fantômes. What else? Ozone, Laurentide, Pasea la Mer, Archipelagos, North Arcade Islands, all just specks of dust on the vastness of the Insulindic. On the edge of the map, the color fades into a blur of dotted lines, black and white, disintegrating into mathematics. In the northeast, a dust mite stands on the north coast of Kylo in a bookstore. It's you. Quint first, can you see cities on the islands? You can! On Kylo, Revachol, a single black star. On Ozone, Fondelier, and Vermandieu. On Archipelagos, Croyon de Moraine. Villiers, on Seminine, Old Duvai, and on Laurentide, Deora of the Seven Seas. 
850 million people live on these little dots, an oceanic world of culture and commerce, torn apart by history. Look at the edges. The ocean breaks apart into a tangle of cosines and azimuths, all pointing into pale nothingness. Mundi is the north azimuth, Rod is the northeast azimuth, Samara is the east azimuth, Seol is the west azimuth, Isolas, they're called. Connections to other worlds. World words past the Insulindian, unknown to you. You only know you've never been there. You have little idea of what they are. Distant stars, gods, but looking at them, you feel almost non-existent. Whatever they are, the Isolas are immeasurably large compared to you and very, very far away. Isolas being con continents, maybe? Perhaps they are gods, gods of distance and outer dust. Look at the map of Rubbish All. That will actually be useful. Of the north coast of a verdant island shattered by the delta of a river, it's the River Esperon. Uh, countless bridges put the shards back together, connecting city blocks to river islands. La Delta says a great artificial heart in the center, teeming with life forms and construction. To the east, rolling hillsides of Le Jardin, Stella Maris, the suburbs of Saint Baptiste, swallowed up into the mega city. They sound rich to you. This is Revachol East. And what's the river? Huron. It's somewhere to live. Not bad. And there's Jamrock. It's bad. People shouldn't live there, but they do. Then Falberg. It's almost as bad and much larger. Then Cole City, it's the worst. And Martinez? It's so small you can't even see it on the map. No, wait, there it is. North of Jamrock, the strip of coast next to the Greater Revisholian Industrial Harbor. It looks downright despondent. It's almost Coast City, to be honest. No, this is somewhere to be. This is all you have, but it's still something. Street and sodium lights. The sky of the world, you're still alive. Thanks, Volition? Interesting. Look at the map of Martinez. It's not really a map, it's a tourist thing. A picture postcard with buildings on it, drawn from an isometric perspective. A date in the upper right corner says 48. Still, it's detailed. Could be pretty useful for scouting ahead. You see the jagged boxes of an industrial harbor. Even the whirling and rags there. Can I buy these map? maps? I should say. I'm sorry, officer. The map of Martinez is the only one available. The other two are not for sale anymore. And besides, you could scarcely afford them. They're quite valuable. Although they might not look it. The map of Martinez is 90 cents, though. Why is the one of Martinez so cheap? That whole thing? It's an out of date map of a tourist location that never was nor came to be from when some design studio people tried to spruce the place up four or five years ago. They also renovated the horse statue, set up those coin-operated viewers, and designed the new street lamps. Place does not look like a successful tourist trap, does it? What happened then? Hmm. Huh. Interesting. They didn't get far for some reason. A shame the project never got going. Would be nice if someone fixed Martinez up. All these ruins are bad for business. I'll take it. Always good to be informed of your surroundings. Which I think means I now have a proper map, maybe? A worn and torn map of the Martinez area, dating from 48. A title on the top reads, Bienvenue à Revachol. It's a bit out of date, as it was originally created by a design studio in a failed attempt to spruce up Martinez and turn it into a fancy tourist location. Uh, let's see, the worn map features the patchwork grid of the streets of Martinez, which directions, with directions to appropriately touristy locations. Year 48 resides in the upper right corner. Eh, you know, I didn't want to spend all day on this, but... Trace a map through the grid. Your finger moves through the various streets across Rue de saint guilain Guilaine, and Rue de saint Cispare over saint Brum and Martinez North. Finally coming to a halt on the spot where you are currently standing, although the map gives no such indication itself. For a more detailed view of the map, go to your journal, then the map tab. Aha! Uh -huh. Journal. Uh, map, 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 map. Map. Aha! Success? I suppose this is actually a rather small area. Hmm. Okay. Interessante. This bookstore is not strictly about crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. There's also a wide range of paranatural literature. Look through it. Amidst the various books, you find one written by someone named... Matthias W. Dundas. It's about wholeness, unity, and balance. These three things are very important to the working class mind. The point of the book, and many others on the shelf, is to give people medicinal advice in situations where they don't have access to paid health services. Ah. Yes, that's completely unfamiliar to me. Ha 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 ha. Ahem. <clears throat> How does that work? In service platitudes, while also telling everyone that traditional medicine, the kind people don't have access to and which costs more than this book, is garbage and would only give you cancer anyway without even curing your cold or anything. Wholeness, unity, balance, on the other hand, can basically take care of anything. Although it is important to note, when it's up to your mind to heal yourself, then it's because of your mind that you're ill in the first place. Hmm. Fascinating. Book say anything else? Book features chapters on topics such as how to find magnesium, 
even less plants you can harvest magnesium from, how to continue drinking if you're an alcoholic who has destroyed your liver, and using a chapter on the ancient Syrais tradition of using duck gallbladder preservatives to treat and prevent sexually transmitted diseases. Pre and post factum apply. Nothing worth buying. It's just mundane garbage. What's even paranatural about this? Help me, Inland Empire. There we go. The throbbing in your head increases with every passing moment you gaze at the shelf. Suddenly, as if out of nowhere, a small green book becomes apparent. It, the title of it reads, Medicinal Purposes of the Pale. What's the pale? The book contains very little explanation on the matter. This knowledge seems to be taken for granted. What's it about? The book contains descriptions of various pseudoscientific therapies, alternative medicines, and folk remedies involving the pale, also known as le territoire. For example, it recommends vigorously swatting one's naked body with a venic, or hand broom, made from the leafy twigs of a young birch tree from the near pale. Sounds invigorating. It is, and good for the circulation, too. What else? It also recommends consuming distilled spirits like vodka or whiskey that have been aged in the pail. Readers are instructed to cover these jars in a shallow hole just inside the pail and leave them there for 30 to 60 days depending on the potency desired. And what does this pale aged liquor do? Among other benefits, it's alleged to restore a damaged liver to perfect health. That seems improbable. I should probably get my hands on some of that. What else is there? For general health and well-being, readers are encouraged to take regular strolls through the pale, though a side bar cautions readers to limit each stroll to less than an hour. These strolls promise to cleanse the mind of worries and bodies of toxins, especially if the perambulator performs this ritual in the nude. Nudity figures prominently in a number of these prescriptions. This is exactly what you need. I'm pretty sure it is, in Inland Empire. I don't trust you. There's an entire section devoted to cures for men who are struggling to perform their marital obligations. I certainly don't need that. I would, but honestly, I need uh, money for paying for the rent, so... What books are these, though? Hmm, sir, please, no browsing in that shelf. That wisdom is not for free. I can't have you end up, like, opening a police store next door and stealing my customers. Oh, no. Wait, what? Police store? Police store? Really? Really? Police store. Okay. Yeah. Actually, this might be an episode dedicated to mostly reading, because I do have all those cases I need to look into. Why is it not? Oh, yeah. I forget that this game doesn't scroll. I've been playing some other RPGs, and Waz usually scrolls the camera, but here it doesn't. Not so much. Ah, uh, well. Anywho, I'm going to go talk to the rich lady with the boat. <gasps> ooh, ooh, bird or otter? Bird, a lonely cormorant surveys the sea, indifferent to your approach. Good for you, cormorant. How is it already snowing? Ah, oh, well, let's look around here. Inside the frame of a motorcycle, in repair, and tools used to disassemble it. Hey. Ooh. Signal blue navy coat. Hmm. Ooh, I like it. I like it. Kind of like this better, though, I think. Extra suggestions, nice. The half high flight. I don't really use that, I don't think. Of course, I don't rightly remember what it is, so how would I know? Hmm. Yeah, before we go... Well, you know what? Yeah, let's go exploring. Yeah, up here, Pigo. What? A sturdy metal door guards the southwest entrance to the apartment building. It's locked. It's locked. Door rattles against your knuckles, but there's no response. Door rattles again, but this time you hear an elderly woman's voice calling out from inside. Stop banging on the door. I'm not letting any more strangers inside. Hold it on. Who I am. Now, go on, get out of there. From within comes the faint sound of a broom sweeping across the concrete floor. This is the police. Open the door. Everyone knows the police don't come round here. But I'm not joking. No, I already told you. I won't be responsible for any more strangers getting into the building. Go check the backyard door. Maybe someone there will. Kim, tell her we're real policemen. Madame, I assure you. We are real police officers. There's no reply, just faint swooping sounds inside. God. Anyway, you wanted to talk, apparently? Nice coat, by the way. 
The streets will flow red once more. A great torrent rushing down Rue d'Esperance. That's how you say that. The streets will not flow red with anything. Who are you? I'm Cindy the fucking Skull. What else do you want to know? Date of birth? Blood type? The last time I was tested for Hep C? That would probably be good to know, actually. Let's start with your blood type and go from there. Go where? Accosting a minor? Hey, she yelled at me, okay? Listen to your partner, pig man. Keep your grubby hooves off little old ladies. Despite the attitude, she puts the brush aside. A brush? An artist? The red spider is urban expressionism? What you looking at? She turns her head to face the coast and nods disdainfully towards Joyce, performing maintenance on her boat. Hatred? Disgust? It's difficult to tell which of the two is more present in her girlish features. The woman on the boat does not notice her staring. She hisses that ozone hole. Someone's got to keep an eye on her. You mean Joyce? On a first name basis with her, are we? Piggy's moving up in the world. Yeah, I don't especially like her either. But why all the negativity? You got a crush on her, aching for an opportunity to defend her honor. Not especially. Uh, know anything about the recent murder, though? Sherman goes and knows. I ain't no snitch, Pigstein. Go forth and forge in someone else's shit. No shortage of squealers in these parts. Do you have my gun, by any chance? Notice you keep using the word pig. Actually, there is a shortage of people who talk to us in a normal, calm, informative manner. Right, Kim? Right? I'm thinking we probably should actually get out of here because we're not wanted and also we're not really, like... Needed, per se? I mean, they... We know who did the murdering. They hung the rapist. And we know why, like, because... Allegedly, he was a rapist, I guess, but... Hmm. Questions. Anyway. We're put on this earth to make your life pleasant, fucko. Well... Right back at you, Cindy. So they won't talk to us about the murder, but maybe you can tell us something about the murder victim's missing armor. What do I care about some fucking tin egg shells? <laughs> is an armor art? Art for the, um, body? Wow, this is the most awkward response possible. Yes. Ugh, alright, sad piggy. I'll give you this one. I saw a little girl in the fishing village running around with military-grade handwear. Looked cute as hell. Aww! If you haven't been there, the village is a shithole down the coast from the main plaza. She waves her hand in a general westward direction. Have a good time. And there's a little girl wearing the gloves there? No, no. That's all the stitching Cindy the Skull does for today. Actually, I don't even know why I told you what I just told you. Looks at you a little side suddenly. I have a weakness for animals. It's the animal thing again. Damn it. Or weakness for police officers, miss. He makes a note on it in his notebook. Thank you either way. What are you doing to the wall, by the way? Can't you tell? I'm painting a beautiful mural, an arrow graffito visible from low orbit. We have access to low orbit, though? Uh, okay. She studies the wall, suddenly pensive. I haven't really started yet. I'm waiting for the right words. Hmm. Hmm. So you don't know what to write? Have you ever tried your hand at graffito? No, but I have at graffiti. But that's another discussion entirely. When faced with a blank wall, most people write unimaginable, unimaginative shit. Like pigs go home and Mona was here. We rarely see pigs around here, though. Just union cads, and my name's not Mona, so... Why are, you so committed... Why are you so committed to defacing the building? This place is severely lacking in havoc. Not even the occasional trash can fire to break up the tedium. Thought I'd mix up, you know, some of the forces of crime and social chaos with a wall-sized invitation. I have an opinion on this. Want to hear it? Yeah? Hmm. I love public art. Don't mind us. Keep doing what you're doing. Thanks, I'm sure the inspiration will come to me now that I have an official RCM stamp of approval. She means the opposite. Catch you later, Cindy. Watch your back, Ungulate. You've got eyes on you. Yeah, yeah, I do. Nice kid. Anyway. Do, 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 do. Sup. Hey. You're back. Good. What can I help you with? Not an umbrella, I hope. I don't need one myself, you see. Neither do I, Pat, your similarly wet cloak. Very rugged, she nods in approval. Good choice. Now, I suspect you had questions. Love like talking to pass a rainy day, am I right? Do you have something about these tattoos, by the way? Actually, I can finish your quest here. You seem smart. I need someone to give me a lowdown on this reality we're in. 
Miss Reality? She pulls her hood closer around her neck. Yes, Reality is your side case. An experimental side case. It's related to that medical episode. I have trouble remembering even those basic terms of reality. Ah, yes. The episode sounds like an accused case of encephalopathy. Now that I think about it. Encephalopathy. I know that word. I don't... Mm. Damn it, trying to make me remember my college education now. Uh, she puts down her thermal cup and looks at you. Don't be phased, madam. He functions perfectly well. He only needs a lowdown on all of reality. We may be here a while then. She takes a long sip of tea. Ask away, officer. I'll help however I can. All right, we're in. I know all. These all look good, but begin with the first, okay? Where are we? We're in Martinez, baby. Baby? A casual term of endearment popular among the 50-plus crowd. It's a disco holdover. Pay it no heed. I'm a disco holdover myself. Ha! <laughs> she smiles. Aren't we all? Nice. She refers to your corresponding ages. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what is Martinez? Martinez is a district of Revachol. She looks around, her green raincoat flapping in the wind. A very small district tucked away near the Industrial Harbor, north of the 881 and Jamra. You'd be excused for not knowing about it. Unimportant, they say. Forgotten, even. Shelled to smithereens during the revolution, she shrugs. It has its charms, just not this time of year. Hmm. Tell me more about Martinez. I'm not a good ambassador. I've only been here once before as a teenager. Not a lot's changed. Close your eyes. There are ruins, a terminal, fishing boats, reeds, boys with boxy shoulders. She opens them. This place used to be a province, a workers' resort before the city swallowed it and the artillery did its work. The reeds are the real star of the show here now. The further down the coast, the wilder it gets. You mentioned a sea. What sea is this? It's not really a sea. It's the Bay of Revachol, and the bay feeds into the ocean. We're near the ocean? Yes, we're on an island in the ocean. An ocean. The world's largest body of water... Water, the Insulindic, known to the early Revolutionians as Le Immensites Bleu, the Blue Immensities. Fast, lukewarm, and unknowable, flowing in and out of sight. What's the name of this island? It's Kailu, as you already know. She looks to the waters. Imagine a pebble, a smooth over pebble amidst a great blue sea, misshapen, cracked. The cracks are the river's Esperance. We're in the delta of this river on the sixth branch, the Martin Hayes distributary. It's clear that this pebble is of enormous value to her and to humanity at large for some reason. But I'm still unclear why. Tell me about another perhaps even more fundamental... Well, no. Okay, that's Martinez. What's Revachol? Mm, which one do I choose? Yeah, tell me about another perhaps even more fundamental aspect of reality. Oh, cool. Mm. I see... What is this acute encephalopathy? It's a neurological disorder caused by a lack of vitamin B in the brain. Symptoms include retrograde amnesia. It's quite serious. You should get yourself checked out. What causes encephalopathy? Well, it's either bariatric surgery or long-term alcohol use. It's definitely the drinking. She nods slowly. <laughs> what times are these? These are unimportant times, detective. She puts her finger to her lips, then points at you. You and I were born after the dust had settled a thousandth of a second too late. Too late for what? For the... Big time. Her eyes light up. There's a flash of teeth. What's the big time? The revolution, she says. Ha, huh, and what is this revolution I keep hearing about? It's quite easy. Every hundred years... I'm sorry? It's quite easy. Every hundred years or so, our species, get, species gets together to decide what's next. Who gets shot in the head and who got the mineral rights. It's a real kerfuffle. What? Would you say it was a bunch of apes duking it out? Why, of course, we're talking Duke Out Central, full swing into intera species warfare. Warfare. And the apes, were they evil? No, I'd say the apes were neutral. She looks at you, her gaze sharp. Okay, neutral. On the other hand, she turns north to the bombed out buildings lining the waterfront, then shivers slightly. Who got shot in the head? That would be the communists. Generally speaking, 40 million people got shot in the head during the World Revolution. But the communists, they all got shot in the head. Oh, the anarchists, too. They shot them well. So, well, one forgets they even existed. She likes the totality of it. Did the communists and anarchists shoot back? Did they ever? Before they got shot themselves, they shot two million people. Truly a kerfuffle. Sounds like they should have shot more people in the head, then. Ah, they might have won that. In that case. 
This nun does not represent the official RCM opinion, Lieutenant says from behind his notes. Don't worry, Krasmazov shot 15 million people in the head, but that was all the way over in Grad. No one else gets shot in the head, on the opposing side? Oh, lots of people. Even the king got shot in the head, or thrown beneath a horse, or drowned. Accounts differ. It was unceremonious. She shakes her head. Just as well, he wasn't actually the king, just the king's nephew. The real king abdicated and lived out a long and productive life as a venture capitalist in Grad. Smart king. Yes, King Gilon... Excuse me? King Gilaim had a nose for bad PR. He ran before... What was ex the expression uh, went down? Anyway, Gil got out alive and his nephew Fristle got shot in his place. Him and tens of thousands of his wonderfully fascist kingsmen. It was a wild time. Who got the mineral rights then? Liberals got the mineral rights. She looks up to the sky, then inland at the crumbling city. And by mineral rights, I mean everything. Okay, and by liberals, you mean... Liberals are usually middle-class people's detective or the remaining gentry, the beneficiaries of the pre-revolutionary arrangement. Some were rich enough to stay with the constitution, with monarchy. Big mistake. Others better than the revolution. They were called the ultras or ultra-liberal. They fared well. Uh, how did the liberals win at all? They didn't win so much as survive. We were the last ones standing when the war ended. Everyone else got shot on the head, remember? We. She's one of them, of course. If everyone got shot, who was there to surrender to? To foreign intervention, the coalition. Those people really took the mineral rights. Wait, you said the liberals already took everything. The liberals took everything that wasn't nailed to the ground. The coalition took the ground. She stomps her rubber booted foot. Booted foot. The ocean, the laws, and the people. Who are the coalition? The coalition of nations. Grod, Mesk, Vesper, Messina, Oranje, and Sir Leclef, the armed center of the world. They landed here and ended the revolution. It was the moralist thing to do. Moralist? The moralists believe in keeping everything exactly the way it is. They believe in mineral rights and not shooting people in the head. At least not in the same manner and volume as others do. They are the long-standing provisional rulers of Revachol now, the coalition government. This is their zone of control. They embolden the RCM with crumbs of the same law they took. Technically speaking, you are a moralist. The color of moralism is blue. The official motto of the moral intern, or moralist international, is a blue forget-me-not, a piece of the gray sky. Unofficial, for a moment, there was hope. Oh boy. Hmm. If always picking the option that doesn't commit to anything, then hell yes I am, and also not. Um, yeah, yeah, that does sound like me in this particular series, but uh, not just technically, practically. For a moment, there was hope. A devout man at the center, hard to come by. It's good to have someone who takes a moderate approach to head shooting, in your line of work, I mean. Yeah, not the biggest fan of the head shooting, you see, so. When was this kerfuffle? The turn of the century revolution? She smiles mischievously. Don't answer, it's a trick question. The revolution began in 02 on the Grad Isola, though by the end the whole world had gotten involved. Who started it? it wasn't a who, but a what? A pandemic of Zorath, a particularly violent prion disease, which the authorities in Grad proved unable to contain. Then Mazov came along and overthrew the government. What did this Zorath do? It made people overthrow their governments. Wow, really? Of course not. It was a highly infectious microorganism that destroyed brain tissue. The actual causes of the revolution were material. The pandemic only provided the spark. Ooh, a little bit topical now, isn't this? It was a funny time in history. They discovered transistors and rock music, but they didn't know anything about prions. Nobody did. Where did it spread from there? From Revachal and Grad? Not far. The world managed to cauterize itself. Mazov's government was overthrown in 08, and the coalition crushed the Revachal commune two years later. It was the end. What came next? Well, you and I, officer. She spreads her arms, raincoat flapping in the wind, our lives in the zone of control. Someone tells you her life and yours are not that similar. Maybe it's because she has a boat and you have that necktie, a pair of pants. Uh, what is this zone of control? A city-state divided into free market zones under the everlasting interregnum of the Coalition of Nations, and you, of course, the citizens of Militia. The clatter of typewriter keys fills the main hall of a reappropriated silk mill, Precinct 41. Chad Tilbrook presses enter. Outside, Officer Elfboy Williams slams the door of an armored motor carriage. Williams? The Zone of Control is the third incarnation of Revachol, after the failure of the Suzerain and the Commune. What happened to the rest of the world? Modernity. They developed the marvels of inter communication, telematic milieus, radiation, colored plastics. Meanwhile, in Revachol West, the aftermath continues for the fifth decade. Telematic milieus. 
uh, television, maybe? I don't... Okay. 31 minus 8 equals 43. Wait, you're saying it's been like this for 43 years? Time flies. What have we been doing all this time? The 20s saw a decade of urban war, west of the river leveled, offshore platforms in flames, still is regarded as an improvement on what came before. 08 to 19 was simply hell. And after that? The 30s? Things settled down in the 30s. Revishal East transformed itself into the world's largest tax haven with the international community's blessing. For the first time in a long time, it seemed like things were going somewhere. All that untaxed income must have fueled the new. That can only mean one thing. That's when they discovered disco. Yes, in quantitative easing. It was a market mirage, unfortunately. The 40s dispelled it. An Isolar wide hangover, you might say. So here we are. Welcome to reality, baby. Hmm. For her to be where she is, Wild Pines Group must have picked the right side. Which side was Wild Pines Group on? They picked the winning side, that's why they're here and others are not. They got lucky. Perhaps it wouldn't have turned out the way it Perhaps it wouldn't have turned out that way had I been in charge. I might have bet on the king and led the pines to doom. You would have sided with the king? I would have sided with the cannons. You sh if you'd seen the calibers of the things, you might have too, she thinks. Perhaps it's better I was born when I was. Ten of the fourteen Indo tribes got it wrong. Feld, Cupri, Tricentennial, so I suppose I would have been in good company. What would you have done differently, though? Good question, she cranes her neck. What would you have done differently? Hmm. I always thought a medical solution. Sounds like Zaroth drove those people mad. So a quarter of humanity, she calculates, simply lost their minds, and how would you stop a prion? A complex folding protein, unlife, with the technology 50 years ago. Hmm. With <laughs> some hygiene, modest social care, and perhaps a little research program? Okay, maybe it's impossible what happened had to happen and always will. Always, she nods. That's the can't-do attitude that truly defines late modernity. You may prove a modern man yet. Hmm. The lieutenant puts down his notes for a moment. Opinions expressed here do not reflect the official position of the RCM. She turns to him. What is your official position, lieutenant? My position, madam. My parents got ripped to shreds in the revolution. I would have gone the same way. I saved by being two years old. That's my position. The abattoir. Understandable, she nods. That's enough about the times. They are what they are. Who knows, an after bloom may yet come. Anyways, enough sentimentality. Is there anything else you want to know? Not so fast. Who is she in all this? Ask her who she is. She owes you an answer. Hmm. Actually, this. Ah. It remains a mystery that you mean by this something close. This isn't about you. It's about reality. Hmm. In the future, perhaps. This one's basically impossible, so... There we are. Strange coldness comes over you as you look at the world. The waves sway the sloop slowly, that's all. I want to know what you are. Hmm, she hums. She won't maneuver her way out of this. What are you? I'm the vilest of the vile, she says with a sudden flash of teeth. A traitor, a devourer of nations and infants. I'm an ultra. She raises the corner of her <laughs> mouth, smirk smirking, revealing a canine. Dios mio! Draw across a liberal. <laughs> uh, I don't understand what's so vile about that. Haven't you heard? She nods pedagogically. I'm another creature of the Forbidden Swamp, one of those who pushed the king under a ship wagon and betrayed the revolution. I can see you thought I'd gone extinct. No sane person identifies as an ultra liberal anymore. Not in broad daylight. She looks you in the eye. You're a centrist at heart, a real moralist. Tell me now that I've uncoiled myself, do you find me frightening? In her green eyes, you see a mixture of truth and self-satire, decades of guilt and pride. I forgive you, but only because you're charming. Adieu, she pronounces, who being of great charm and guile, sneaketh into the homes of the god isle, of the goodly. That dialect is ubi sunt. You recognize the quote from somewhere, a play written way back in the Franco-Nigerian century. Beneath her waterproof raincoat and silk shirt is a body imbibed in numb twelve perfume. You're suddenly and intimately aware of it. And persuades them to addict themselves to her... 
to his service. I maybe you remember more than you let on, she gives you a coy little smile, despite whatever brain damage the alcohol may have inflicted. <laughs> you know, maybe not. Nod, devil woman. I'm afraid you'll find that every woman is a devil woman detective. There are only aesthetic differences between one and the other. When the dust is settled, the liberals were the only ones left to clean up the mess. By virtue of their survival, they were handed enormous power to shape the future. She turns her gaze to the Delta. This was all our last generation managed. Would you have done something differently? With due respect to our overlords, the eternal caretaker government that keeps the Marnais a monument to the efficacy of its artillery, I would not have relinquished sovereignty to the coalition, not here in Martinez, not in the Stella Maris or Delta Beachheads either, if not for my own sake. She realizes her small, cold fists are clenched. She loosened them. Then for my daughters, we had an obligation to defend our sovereignty. We should have burned the Holy Solar down rather than let them have it. Dark orange flames reflect in her green eyes, an oil fire on the ocean. You have daughters? Yes, whatever else I am, I'm also a mother and a wife. She closes her eyes, then opens them again. Now shall we return to reality? Yeah, what's this, though? A bird? She tilts her head. A finicid? A flightless bird of the polar regions? Am I really that awkward? Of course you're not, my dear. I'm just terrible at guessing games. I mean, what is this place here? Ah, she spreads her arms almost as wide. This is the pier of Rue de saint guillain 33A, where the tenants have been kind enough to rent me a slot. Or two. She looks around. What is Rue de saint guillain 33A? A pre-revolutionary tenement. Old buildings are called tenements, you see. And new buildings, battements. After les battements nouveaux. But 33A and 33B are not nouveau. They're old. She looks up the crumbling facade. This one used to be 8 to 10 stories tall, a real high-rise by the standards of the last century. Built to mirror the skyscrapers across the bay in the Delta. That was before the war, of course. Who lived in them? Mostly the urban middle class, I believe. This was once primo real estate, before the cannons lopped four or five stories off. Splat, splat, from a dilapidated balcony. Is there more red down there now? Uh, Cindy of this skull gives Joyce the evil eye, her red paintbrush held to her throat. You could be wrong, but from here it appears as if she's running the brush across her throat in a sawing motion. Wonderful. What is that? Point to Cindy the Skull. The girl in the old lady rags? Yes. Looks like a sullen and rebellious member of a teen infraculture. Infraculture? Yes, you and I belong to the supraculture. We're common, the herd, the music on the radio, the food in the chain restaurant. Those are all too popular for the girl in the old lady rags. She prefers a fantasy world in infraculture with its own dress codes and vernacular, a subculture, if you will. It is an illusion, I'm afraid. There's no refuge from the superculture. I understand everything. Make it more complicated somehow. I can't. That's how simple it is. One may dye their hair green and wear the grandma's coat all they want. Capital has the ability to subsume all critiques into itself. Even those who would critique capital end up reinforcing it instead. She pauses to take a long, leisurely sip of tea. All right, what's next? Suddenly you're not sure you're part of the superculture. I think I may be part of an infraculture. Her eyes go round with surprise, and what would that be? Disco. Ha! I can see that, yes. I dabbled in those dark arts myself. Not so long ago. She smiles enigmatically. I assure you, it was a thoroughly supercultural phenomenon. All permeating, downright mandatory. Nothing infra about disco, baby. You're disco? Those days are long behind me. She looks inland with sarcastic willful wistfulness. And even in the early 30s, I would say I was more of a new girl. Disco was a minor, but still enjoyable facet of the whole thing for me. The new? The new. A cultural era, and the name of the decade it ravished the 30s. It came out of post-revolutionary revishal. It was ultra-liberal. It involved lots of partying, as you might imagine, and champagne colored everything. By the looks of it, that would have been when you came of age. Now, she raises her eyebrow at you. Hmm. Sounds fun. Can't remember a single thing. Was it Guillaume Le Million who said, if you can't remember the new, you weren't there? If you can remember the new, you weren't there? Wait, Guillaume Le Million? I was just thinking about that guy. Whatever happened to him? I know exactly what happened to him, pretty sure. Ah, yes. She looks sad. This is not very central to reality, is it? Still want to know. I can't be 100% sure, but I believe he died due to complications from venereal disease. Sure he didn't die of autoerotic asphyxiation? You can't get a venereal disease from that, can you? Which one, though? All of them. So you're saying he didn't vanish in a puff of stardust? 
I'm afraid no, but then again, one can't be entirely sure it was all part of his mystique. Ask someone else and you may get a more champagne-colored take. Anyway, she concludes, what other basic facets of reality should we discuss? That's all for now. Hmm. And we'll continue this investigation later. What's this? We're getting reports of normal, reasonable, temperate political opinions somewhere in Martinez. That's me, Mr. Reasonable. Someone's got to keep it sane around here. The air suddenly feels calmer, more transparent in a strangely tender way. Perhaps it's the hangover, perhaps it's the temporary surge of serotonin, but something tells you it's time to become a citizen of the Kingdom of Conscience. Fine, where is this Kingdom of Conscience? It's not a place, it's a moment in time that can only arise in the right circumstances. In all of human history, it's only been achieved a handful of times. How do you bring about these circumstances? Incrementally. Yawn, you'd get there faster with a little speed. History's greatest catastrophes have been brought about by people trying to make the world a better place too quickly. That's the genius of Dolores Day. She recognized that progress is meaningless if its gains are lost because of instability. Real lasting change can only come from come about gradually, increment by increment. What about all the things that are wrong now? Tis tis, just because you live in the present doesn't mean you have the right to place your needs above the needs of the future. You may never live, live to see the kingdom of conscience, your children may not, even your grandchildren might not, but that's no excuse not to keep working. What rationality. What sung Freud. What a fucking joke. Wait, is this kingdom of conscience really about doing things or just preserving the status quo? Do you believe the status quo is preferable to chaos and bloodshed? Yeah. There you have it. Sometimes holding the line is progress. Yeah. Okay, but what's the kingdom of conscience actually like? The kingdom is difficult to comprehend and even more difficult to describe, partly because humanity will need to discard many of the categories that define and limit it today. The kingdom of conscience is post-capitalist, post-national. It's also post-industrial, post-ideological, and even post-sexual. Sounds incredible. Allons-y, let's go there right now. Slow down, Mr. Reasonable. Did you miss the part about compromising and taking things slow? Oh, right. Then let's get there eventually. That's right. Remember, real democracy is just around the corner for Evershaw. When that real democracy kicks in, a long time from now, we're all going to be so much happier. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. The political philosophies in this game. Oh, I love them. Love that critique. Oh. But yeah, things will be better later. And we'll finish this later. <laughs> but for now, thank you for your time. Not the like, comment, and subscribe buttons below. Use them responsibly, and I'll see you all soon. You know what? I like this much light, more lighthearted segment of the game right now. Interesting. Very interesting. Oh, dear.